Hey everyone, Mike here from Clear Brands Grow. In today's video, I am joined by the awesome James Hardy of Code24. So yeah, exactly. Check out his logo. Um, so James is a, well, was a mutual acquaintance of a, a, like a, a joint friend of ours. Uh, I can now, you know, proudly say, call him a friend. Uh, and like a lot of people in this, like at the moment, like he's someone I, I know quite well, but I've actually never physically met um, thanks to the pandemic. Um, so we've only ever met on Zoom calls and, you know, podcasts, um, but never in person. So, you know, hopefully one day, James, we will meet in person. I don't know. Um, I don't hope that day comes to be. <laughs> yeah, you don't know what I've got. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so basically today is all about you know, learning more about you um, as an individual, and then we'll touch uh, on what your business does and who they help. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of kind of the gist. So James, tell me about you, you know, your background, sure. the fun stuff. Sure. Yeah. Well, um, thanks for the intro, Mike. Uh, I, I watch your videos every single day, so it's really cool to actually be on one. Um, <laughs> and, unless you cut it up and use me over 10 days or something. No, but it's really cool to be part of your challenge anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm James Hardy. I, I run a company called Code24. Uh, it's it's a software and app development company and our aim is to develop, to develop uh, passive income streams for uh, startup entrepreneurs, basically. Um, I started developing 13 years ago now. So I'm, I'm 26. So I've actually spent half my life um, coding and that was part of like a school project. I started doing, doing websites and things and my first website was absolutely terrible. Um, but I, I got the um, I got the kind of development bug. I love the buzz you get off the achievement, making something work out of like a random string of uh, text and things. So it was something that um, I, I enjoyed from day one, basically, and, and it became my thing. So I I entered like website competitions and things and I got third and it wound me up that I didn't come first and this is something I wanted to do. So I kept working at it and uh, when I was in college, I then developed my first social network. So I got to the point where uh, websites weren't doing it for me anymore and I started doing more complex code. Uh, I developed a social network, which to be honest with you, looking back was absolutely terrible. But again, it was about the... Um, the experience and yep. uh, that sense of achievement I got from like producing code that actually did something. Uh, so the social network was for schools mm -hmm. and it was an idea for my secondary school where you could communicate with the teacher and submit homework and, and the teacher could put up, uh, like they could put up homework and, and answer mm -hmm. any questions and things. Um, so I think it's a really cool concept. And even to this day, I still think it's a really good concept. If you went into Dude, a school and it, it had would have worked network, really well. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so like if you had a social network and it was like, you go into this class and it's got all your classmates and you can mm -hmm. ask questions of any of them. Um, yeah. I think it would work really well now if I'd have continued developing it, yeah. but that's what it is. Um, and I kind of scrapped the project after um, I realized how much investment would be needed to integrate into mm -hmm. school systems and things. And it was just one of those things that you, you just can't yeah. invest in at, at that age. Um, I got my first job and I did nine months under employment before I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, this ain't for me. <laughs> um, so um, basically I got a job at a web agency and I was just chucking out um, website after website pretty much the same every single time and I wasn't getting that sense of achievement and challenge uh, that code was allowing me to have and then uh, yeah I started a website agency with a friend at the time and this was ages ago 2013 or something I think I was 19 at the time I started that and mm -hmm. it ran for four years before I parted ways with it mm -hmm. um, we had, we had a disagreement and a falling out. And at the time we had eight employees or, or there was eight of us um, working at the company. So it was a, it was a reasonably sized web mm -hmm. agency. Um, but I, I unfortunately walked away with nothing and had to start again. So that's where code Two form was born. Mm -hmm. um, January, 2018. It, 
I started it up just because that's what I enjoyed doing. I enjoyed doing the apps. I enjoyed doing software, challenging myself every single day. And, mm -hmm. um, and then we are today. We are here still. Cool, man. Mm. I, love, I love the fact that you're like a, you're a thoroughbred entrepreneur. Like you knew that you wanted to get out of the, you know, the rat race, like almost immediately. Yeah. <laughs> it, it didn't take long, to be honest. It was like, here's a, here's a boring website to make. And I was like, oh, okay, well, a fun project will come along later. And then another boring project and then another boring project. Sometimes yeah. like, even if the website's on like a really fun subject, mm -hmm. um, it got kind of monotonous. Mm -hmm. and it was just WordPress to install WordPress, change the theme, add a child here. Yeah. Um, and it, I was just like, oh. So I guess, I guess you were, steps. and you were just, you know, taking orders and direction from other people and just building something rather than actually having like an influence on like the, the copy and the design and sort of thing. Yeah. So it's sort of, yeah. So yeah, I can understand that. The developer's um, like the last line of defense for the whole sales process. It's like the design comes into you, the spec comes into you from, from the PM and the design comes in from the designers and you'll just sit there with the two documents. You just make it, you've got no influence. You, yeah. Even if you knew more about the UI or the UX or anything mm -hmm. like that, it's, it's already done and dusted. It's already signed off. Yeah, so. that's fair. Uh, and so obviously you said you started coding like 13 years ago. Yes. So to be honest, you're probably one of the most exper ex experienced coders out there. <laughs> uh, well, I doubt it. <laughs> or very exposed, because you know, code, you know, the coded in the traditional sense, I guess hasn't been around for that long. Mm. Um, so that's awesome. So are you self-taught or have you done courses? How have you sort of, how did you develop your skills? Yeah, all self-taught. So I mentioned at the start that um, it was for, a, it was for mm -hmm. a school project and it was like a World War I project and you could do whatever you wanted to do for this project. I decided to do a website and um, it was like just a s simple HTML website, but I forgot to send uh, like the images and assets to the teacher. So mm -hmm. when it was loaded up onto the screen, obviously the images were still at home on my computer where I made it. Um, oh. So I just had like this hideous yeah. table, uh, yeah. which should have had pictures all around it with just like a block of text in the middle <laughs> um, in like Helvetica or something like it was yeah. the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. Um, like, well, it's, a, it's a lesson learned, isn't it? Yeah, if, if my dog had made it, I'd be quite impressed, but um, it, it was terrible, quite honestly. Um, but there was a guy in the class who also did a website, and he'd mm -hmm. been doing it for, for a while. We'd been coding for a while. And he basically said to me, look, yeah, it was rubbish, um, but stay after school and I'll teach you a few things. And um, to, oh, this awesome. day, to this day, that guy is my best mate. Um, uh -huh. and he taught me pretty much everything that I know to like get me started and to get the mm -hmm. ball rolling. Um, he took a different path and he's in like server tech and things now. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, he really got the ball rolling on the development side of things and, and it just spiraled from there and Google's a wonderful place and stack overflow is fantastic. For developers. Yes. There are so many resources online and like I've used stack overflow before and, and every, the people on there are so keen to help out. Helpful. Yeah. Especially if you say like that, I'm not really a coder, but I, I need some help. Um, mm -hmm. Really useful. Uh, and just, it just, and it also just surprises me on a completely different basis. Like not just coding, but like how few people fully utilize Google to solve their problems. Yeah. Like it's infuriating when they come to you with like a really simple problem. It's like, please Google it. Yeah, or like, why did you Google it? Why did you, why did you not <laughs> consider Googling? Yeah. Like you've literally got like the internet, everything at your fingertips. Mm-hmm. So have you seen that thing? I can't remember what it's called. It's, uh, let me Google that for you. I have to find the, the, the URL, but basically <laughs> it basically you, you go in base, set, like basically select some criteria and things. And it's like, you know, you choose like Google, um, search browser, you type in what you want to search, you send them a link. So they then open this link and it's like this video that shows, you know, step one, open Google, step two, type in their request, step three, press search. And it's like the most passive aggressive thing you'll ever do. That's so cool. I'll have to check <laughs> it out. Uh, there is, there's, um, have you seen Google my way? No. Uh, so, you know, like obviously Google's just got the words Google in the middle yep. of the search bar underneath. Um, uh, but Google my way allows you to change the word Google to whatever you want. And then it gives oh, you nice. the URL for it. Um, oh, excellent. so we used to like change the Google homepage to, to some random, random words. That was like a college trick, that one. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, cool. Where people click their Google shortcut and it comes up with like 
um, some rude word instead of Google. And yeah, people I can imagine. Google's gone wrong or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's another trick. Go check that out. Google. That's good, man. My way. I like the way we've sort of segued into <laughs> cool things. Yeah. But uh, thanks for thanks for sharing like your background and stuff. So tell us more about Code Two Four. Like you know what industries you target? How do you help people? You talked about sort of generating passive income. Just tell yeah. me more about that, man. Yeah. So I mean, we, we've been pretty bad at uh, niching into into specific industries. Um, and that's purely out of my own kind of arrogance or ignorance. I don't know one of the two, um, <laughs> but basically because I love the challenge and I love working things out, I don't want to get to the point where I'm just producing the same content all the time, like same code to, to do the same job. Um, so like I've done work with the shipping industry and I had to learn about how to calculate shipping weights and, um, port to port distances through the sea so you you can't go bird's eye view because there's land everywhere and, mm-hmm. and things like that and working that out with code is just insane mm-hmm. um but i'm so glad i did it and then so i've done something like that and um i work with a, a tennis coach as well i've made a platform that basically runs um his business essentially like you sign up you pay for your membership you can book courts um, you can see what squads are available and book onto mm-hmm. squads and things. And uh, again, an ins- insanely challenging product um, that has spanned for like four years now. Like this was prior to the business starting, I started it. And um, yes, yeah, it's an insanely complex product, but again, really good fun to work on. Mm-hmm. Uh, really like a good sense of achievement every time something goes on and works and you can see mm-hmm. that all his members are using like your court booking system, for example, it's just insane. And then of recent, I worked with uh, a care home, obviously Mm -hmm. right now, or last year I developed a social network for the care home. Mm -hmm. So this was for their staff to um, communicate with one another. Basically the admin team will put up like there's new shifts and things. And then the staff will go on and, and uh, book themselves onto the shift site. It was basically like a Facebook for, for internal use. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a lot of learning that had to go into all that as well mm-hmm. um, about like scalability and things like I knew how many users they had um, I knew they'd be posting regularly and things like that so we had to mm-hmm. I had to do a lot of research into like horizontal scaling of of servers and things of mm-hmm. services um, and then of recently obviously because of everything that's happened through since March um, I altered it or they asked me to alter the social network to allow for family members Mm -hmm. to connect with the residents that live in the home. Um, Yeah. So, so care staff will take a video of, of the resident and tag them in it. And the family member will be able to go onto the app and, and see videos of their family members, which is just an insane project to be a part of. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's how much good that's doing for that company is is just like it just fills me with so much pride to be a powerful yeah. part of that. And that's really cool, man. Like especially now, like you know, yeah, everyone knows what we're going through right now. But um, to have that connection, especially with I guess elderly res- residents that don't necessarily have their own access to Facebook and stuff like that, like at least there's someone else can kind yeah, of yeah, for sure mediate. And um, also the fact it's like a their own system, it's secure and private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's just a number of projects. Obviously, mm-hmm. uh, I work with. Val- friend Luke on, on gig developing gig and um on the SaaS side of things I've got a couple of SaaS products building myself yeah. uh, a few clients like in the works currently which are micro SaaS products which will be kind of five ten pound a month for access yeah. and um that's where the passive income comes from those yeah. SaaS products so we're yeah, building perfect. it once they can market it and mm-hmm. people can sign up from mm-hmm. all over the world um and they're built to scale as well. So they're built for 10 people up to a million people um, yep. and they can just rake the cash in depending on how they market it that way. Yeah. Perfect. Cool, man. And um, what sort of ideas have you got? Like what, the, uh, what sort of things are good from a passive income perspective? Like not maybe some specifics, but there's some, the general things that are quite good. Mm. Um, so, I mean, it's quite a tricky question because it's all dependent on (laughs) on industry, really. Um, But let's say, for example, 
So I'm, I'm building at the moment internally, I'm building a page builder. I mentioned this before we went live. Um, and it's going to allow people to make single one page landing pages, unlimited amount. So as a, as a concept, anybody can sign up to that. Anybody can make their websites um, uh, and just pay their subscription fee. Basically, um, I would say that if a business is repeating a lot of information, it can go onto a system. Um, so, for example, if for my business I wanted like a calculator, so you could go online and calculate apps. Yep. What we've got is we've got an idea there. Oh, I want like an app calculator. Yep. But then if you take it a step further, it could also be a SaaS product for online calculators. Mm -hmm. uh, if we made it in such a way that it would be complex, but if we could make it in such a way that anybody, no matter what their business, could sign up, pay mm -hmm. their subscription, and make their own calculator online mm -hmm. using all the tools that we develop, and they could make their own flow, and they can, and it will produce like a front end that they can put on their website. Mm -hmm. um, that would be like it, just an amazing way. You adapt that idea to yep. make it resellable. Mm -hmm. And then what you've got from that is two income streams. For me, I've developed my app calculator so people can go on an interview and find their, uh, well, I can capture data and they can find out how much their idea is going to cost them. Mm -hmm. And we might turn that into sales. So that's one revenue stream. Whereas yeah. the additional revenue stream is I've now got this SaaS product that anybody else can, you could sign up for it for your yeah. service, build yeah. your own little calculator and you're done. Mm -hmm. and, then, yeah. and then a plumber could sign up and then a, the yep. electrician could sign up do you know what i mean so yep. that's where ideas kind of come that's really cool man yeah I like the fact that you can like use reuse a single product yeah for like i guess the immediate sale but also like for let's like, say passive income and other things like that and people can use it as well mm -hmm. that's really cool man um i had a question for you and i could ask it so what are the benefits of going for like a custom solution versus an off the shelf solution. So we're talking here like, like a, not necessarily a SaaS product, but we're talking about no, a solution more to like a, a, a solution, like a solution to a problem. What are the benefits mm -hmm. of going for say working with yeah. someone like you rather than finding something that's already existing? Yeah. I mean, it's a tricky question to, to overcome for a lot of people, mm -hmm. but, um, uh, the way that a lot of companies have gone is that SaaS model that we've been talking about. It's that monthly fee. And for a lot of things, um, like a lot of specific things that are quite simple, the monthly fee is high. So um, you, you could be looking at like that bit of software that you need is £100 a month, for example. You're talking about £1,200 a year and for, for the rest of your business life type thing. Whereas you could make it yourself for five grand, for example, and um, you're saving money in six, six years. So, so that's one, one kind of key element. Mm -hmm. You're wiping out that expensive monthly overhead from your business. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing about it is control as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, you don't have control over what features they, they implement. You don't mm -hmm. know, have control over... Um, the style, the look, how you use it, things like that. And people yep. said like systems are cumbersome. They're built for the masses. They're not built for mm -hmm. the individual. Um, so if you find it easier to have um, like four stages to your process, I don't know, I'm just spitballing, but four stages to your process, the software that you find that's closest might be eight stages um, and you can do nothing about that. Whereas with Bespoke, you can kind of say, this is how I want it to work. And it's yep. developed exactly like that. And I want to use it on my phone because I'm always out and about. So mm -hmm. I want the buttons to be big and I, I don't want to worry about saving and things like that. And all those things you can do mm -hmm. um, bespoke from, from the off. Whereas yep. with an off the shelf product, um, you don't get that choice. No. No, that's good, man. I like that. I like the fact that, you know, if you do go for like that custom solution, you can design it how your business works. Mm -hmm. rather than trying to change how your business works to fit. Yeah. Um, I mean, a, lot of, a lot of off the shelf things are, are about compromise. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to change the way you work to, to yep. integrate the software. And I don't think it should be like that. Not at all. Perfect, man. Well, I think that's probably a good place to wrap up. Mm -hmm. um, where can people find you or contact you? 
Uh, yeah, so, I mean, this video is going out on LinkedIn, right? Mm -hmm. um, so just search for my name in the LinkedIn bar at the top, James Hardy, or you can search for my company name on uh, any of the social media platforms, basically, two, four, uh, and, and you'll find this little thing, which is my logo. And um, yeah, just, just connect, it'll be sick, and we can go from there. Yeah, perfect. Um, I was going to ask a question of you before. Of course, yeah. Go up. ahead. I know. I know you're desperate to get rid of me. Um, <laughs> I would never want to get rid of you, James. Well, sure. Uh, no, I just wanted to know. Like, obviously, you're like this expert automation and making websites look and work amazingly. And um, I thought it'd be fun online to critique <laughs> my website um, if you don't mind. Basically. Of course, man. Right, so let's um, I let's just just hold back the swear words. I think. Yeah, of course. Uh, right, so I'm just gonna quickly find your website, and then once I've found that, I will share my screen with everyone. And here we go. So I'll make I notes. want you to I want you to know that uh, there's nothing personal. And everything I say is <laughs> aimed, aimed to help you and your business. So I'm just to keep this kind of short um, and focused, I'm going to purely concentrate on the homepage because that's the most important aspect of your app website. And then to keep it shorter still, I'm going to focus on the header of the website, which is basically the section um, you see immediately before you start scrolling. So just like, mm -hmm. Typically, your logo, navigation, first image, heading, headline, stuff like that. Yeah. So if I am going to be brutally honest, landing on your website, I know you're a software web developer and app specialist, um, but it's, it's not immediately obvious on your website. So you've got the word software and app development sort of quite small in the center of the page. My eyes aren't drawn to that initially, so... For the first couple of seconds, I'm kind of thinking, what are you doing? Yes, you've got pictures of the, like the app store and iPhone apps at the back. Mm -hmm. But again, could be anything, could be social media kind of things. So I don't know what, you know, I don't know specifically what you do. I also don't know like how you make my life better. And to be honest, the call to actions right now are a bit um, passive and don't stand out as much. So I don't immediately know how to do business with you. So if I start at the top left-hand corner, because that's where most people's eyes are drawn, mm -hmm. you've just got your symbol. You haven't written your name. So I don't know what, nowhere on your page does it say that you're code 42, or code 24. <laughs> Get that right? Yeah. Um, so that's the first thing. I don't know who you are and, and what you do. Um, your navigation, to be honest, is a lot more succinct than a lot of other companies, but you've still got some serve, like some links to pages that, probably don't need to be there so things like blog about us they're very much stuff about like you as a like a business and and the first thing i do when i land a website is i want to know whether you can solve my problem so like those things just aren't important this don't relevant um you also haven't got a clear call to action right here, like in the sort of top right hand corner which is again yeah. sort of people start in the left hand corner go to the right um if i'm looking at your headline the idea is just the beginning. I have no idea what that means. Like it's very fluffy. Um, it's kind of cute, but not very clear. Like it could apply to a number of businesses. So that's what we need to change as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, just like even the imagery um, is a bit, not bland is the wrong word, but like it just doesn't really help you convey a message. So that's kind of my critique. It's just not very clear. Uh, not obvious what you do. Not obvious how you help me. Uh, and I'm kind of scratching my head as to like how to get started working with you if, if I overcome those barriers. So this is now like the, the website makeover. So like in the top left-hand corner, I'd keep your logo there, but I'd make sure that your business name is there. So, so mm -hmm. code two, four. And then just to make it really clear when people land on your website, I'd add like a little tagline. Now the tagline isn't something cute, and, like cute and clever. It has to be something obvious. So I would just put software and app development. So they literally, even if they just looked in the top left-hand corner and then close the screen, they know that you're, you're code two for and you do software and app development. Like really quick, really quick, clear, very obvious. I would then 
um, remove things like home about us blog and even contact us to be honest i'd remove them and just have services and then i'd also add to that navigation a clear and obvious call to action now you've already used things like learn more and get a free quote but to me learn more is very passive and not very obvious uh, like what does learn more mean like i don't know what you do so what am i learning more about right now and also get a free quote i feel for like your type of business like it's a high-end ticket service it's not like a you know straightforward you know fence panels or something straightforward like you do need to have a conversation you need to, you need to qualify people um, they need to understand kind of the investment involved. So I would change your main call to action to something like schedule a call or book a call just to get them on, you know, started. So that should go in the top right hand corner and it should be a, a bold color. So the fact that your say navigation bar background is green, it should probably be your, your call to action should probably be like yellow, something that really pops. Mm -hmm. If you then focus on the center of your um, hero image. So your headline, like we talked about it, the, the idea is just the beginning, very yeah. obscure and, and kind of meaningless. Mm -hmm. You've touched on the fact that you, you know, help entrepreneurs and startups create passive sort of create or generate passive income. So that's a great benefit. That's like a great thing that you, you know, that's how you help them improve their life. So I would simply put something like, generate passive income through software and apps. Like a really clear, this is what I do and this is how it helps your, like, you know, improves your life, how it you know, solves the problem of not having enough income. Yeah. Um, you could add like another sort of subtitle that goes into a bit more detail. Um, but the fact that you've already kind of got software and apps in the top left hand corner and you've kind of mentioned it already as well in that headline, you could probably leave it. But you might say, you know, you might specify the, the type of industries you work with. I know you haven't niche right now, but you could just be a bit more specific. And then I would repeat your main call to action. So that yellow call to action we've talked about, put it underneath. So again, they've got multiple opportunities to click on that. And that call to action, to be honest, we won't go into it, but that call to action should be repeated throughout your homepage. So if your website is, or homepage is broken up into sections, Mm -hmm. Make sure that I would personally go with make sure that your call to action is in every section. So every time they scroll down, they see that call to action. Uh, it may sound passive, like it may sound pushy, like you're putting this multiple times, but that's just going to help them navigate your website. And like, as soon as they are ready to do business with you, then they'll just click on that. So that's great. And then something else I would add um, is something called a value stack. So at the bottom, like, so just above the fold. So before you start scrolling, I would add three, basically additional benefits. So easily scannable things. So it might be, you know, generate passive, you could repeat, uh, generate passive income, you know, um, James, what other benefits have you know? You know so save, I don't know, save time is a good example for other businesses yeah. or, you know, those kind of things are like three things that mm -hmm. are value to them. Improve efficiency they may, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Improve efficiency. Um, uh, uh, you know, it, uh, improve the sellability of your, your business, that kind of thing. Like, yeah. Increase the value of your business. Those, th those sorts of things, those three simple things, short, very easy to read. People will scan it. Uh, and then the final thing, to touch on is just the background image. So at the moment you've just got obviously a picture of a, a phone with some apps. So it is related to a thing, but really you should have a picture of a person and that person should be like a smiley, happy, almost like they've, they've benefited from working with you. So having a person like helps build trust. Um, you become, you go, you become more than just like a faceless entity, even if that person doesn't work for you. Um, and it also just helps people like envision where their life could be. So for you, it could be just someone like, it could be someone just on their phone smiling away or um, a business owner, like clearly making more money or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of like tie in with the, the sort of, the sort of life benefit that you provide them. 
the other option, which you might want to do this as well, or it might you might prefer to do this, is to stick a picture of you on there. So make it make it more personal. Um, so that's something I've a bit more personal branding. Um, and again, like you're you're trying to separate yourself from everyone else, and most people won't put pictures of themselves on there. Um, so I make that connection. Um, so that's something I'm going to do on my own website is actually add my, you know, my classic me crossed Your Steve Jobs photo, yeah. My Steve Jobs photo. <laughs> I'm going to put that on my photo to kind of, I think initially build the brand around me, even though it's not named after me, like just try and get, just take a different approach to it. But um, yeah, so that's kind of what I'd, I'd uh, recommend for the, the header of your homepage. Cool. Um, there's obviously plenty nice. we'd go into further down. So yeah. Thoughts? That's all just for that. <laughs> That's all just <laughs> for the top bit. Um, oh, um, thought, I'll send you an invoice. <laughs> yeah, when, when I said it, I thought oh, there might be one or two things, but I wrote about oh, two, three, four, five, six. Wrote 12, 12 action points from what you just said there. Excellent. Um, so just for that one bit, I, I'm scared about how much work you're going to give me if I tell you to go through the whole thing. <laughs> So that's the thing, like, and if you if you just made those twelve changes and just improved the top of the home page, that would like massively increase the, the conversion rate, or at least your sort of lead people actually reaching out to you to like fight, you know, get in touch with you because yeah. they'll instantly know what you do and how you can help them, and it should resonate with them, and then they, that should encourage them to 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 become a lead. Yeah, hundred percent, mate. The the feedback there is insane. So good. Perfect, man. Uh, so yeah, we can, we can always uh, jump on the call and do a bit more of a, a private session because, um, you know, I do like to help my mates out with their crap websites. Um, <laughs> hey, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you. <laughs> and it is me. Yeah, it's true. Um, so yeah, man, that's, that's kind of my advice. Amazing. Um, I will end the advice there. So I'll stop sharing my screen, get us both up. And I think that's probably a great place to stop. Yeah. So James, thank you very much for coming on my video. Not a problem um, at all. It's been good fun. And thanks for sharing, you know, more about Co24 and your background and letting me rip your website to shreds. <laughs> and I will see you soon, mate. So thanks again. Thank you, thank you very much. Have a good Cheers, mate. Bye. Cheers, bye.